This video is brought to you by Rodipolis.com. Hello, my name is Ines Alea from ToleratedCinematics.com and today I will be showing you how to create this. Okay, so very cool effect. I've actually created a tutorial like this way before, uh, but yeah, just a little bit differently, just using the same effect. And it was a very popular tutorial and a lot of people were asking how they could approach that effect with a different uh, result. So this is a different result. I will be creating this uh, very quickly, actually. Um, it's a very easy effect. It's just stacking up multiple effects and that's where the time goes. So we'll just start right away creating a new composition and naming this to main. Then we'll change this to a full HD comp, so 1080p, uh, uh, so 1920 by 1080, 24 frames, square pixels, and I will change my duration to 10 seconds, uh, but you should change the duration to the length of the song that you want to render out, so that's up to you. So click OK once you're done, and we'll go to our project manager. The first thing you want to do is import your song. So I have right over here Levito the Bear, and uh, this is actually... Um, a friend of mine, he's creating beats and he's actually really good, so if you want to check out his uh, songs, you can always go in the description, a link will be there. Um, so now we want to change, uh, create a new composition, uh, well, a new solid, I am sorry, uh, and change the color to black and change the name to do background. Okay, so click OK and we have a background layer. So now we have the song, our background, create a, create a new solid and change its color to white just to get some overview and change this to audio reaction. Then we want to click on our audio reaction, click on the song, go to layer, pre-compose it and go to move all attributes in a new composition, audio reaction comp. Click OK. Double click on the comp, so now we jump into the comp and we can focus ourselves just on our audio reaction. So I will just toggle this um, transparency off here. So we have a background to, uh, to see everything on. And then we want to go to effect, generate audio spectrum. Um, so right away you can see these uh, pink dots. I want to change this to white because pink isn't my favorite color and I don't want to look at it uh, for a second longer. So uh, I have my Levito here. I will change this uh, audio layer here to a Levito track. We'll click on here and right away you can see it's already reacting to our audio but it's not a circle yet so one thing we want to do is change the comp settings go to comp comp settings change the comp settings for audio reaction comp to a square comp so we'll also change this to 1920 by 1920 so we have a nice square comp and then also for the solid we want to go to layer solid settings make comp size click ok so we have our reaction here and we have our solid selected and we're going to mask and actually you can use each mask but I'm going to use an ellipse and I will just draw a circle by holding uh, control and shift and dragging out and we'll, I will get a perfect circle like this. So something like this and then what we want to do is go to path over here and select our mask. It's that easy. I want to deselect over here so I can focus on my audio reaction. You can toggle mask on and off. I will toggle it off so I can focus on my on my uh, view here. So uh, right away you can see this really cool effect already. And actually there's nothing much more to it. Uh, with this you can stack up our effects to get a result looking like this. It's actually multiple uh, audio reactions that I've stacked up right like this. And I just done it differently each time. So you can see that it's uh, yeah very easy to accomplish. It's just multiple solutions. So I'll, I'll just show you how to get started on this. Uh, click on the solid and right over here is actually where the magic happens. You have display options. You can change it to digital. Digitals are these lines. You can change it to analog lines and you'll get this here and change it to dots. Okay, so we have also side A and B. I'll change it to digital for a second so we can see what I'm talking about. Side A is the inside, side B is the outside. So we can do both of them. You can select A, you can select B. And actually, I'll change this for a very short second so you can see the different settings. So actually, very cool. Okay, I'll reset it for a second here. 
Okay, so uh, another thing you want to do is uh, play around with the start frequency, the end frequency, the bands and the height. The rest you can leave actually how it is. Uh, maybe change the thickness to one. I like uh, thin, uh, thin lines here. Uh, it makes everything look more detailed and a lot more futuristic. Uh, so just try to work with thin things. So um, you can change the start frequency right here. So I'll change it to 20 and I'll change the end to 1000 and change the bands to like 300. Okay, there we go. We already have results and I'll change the height to 1000 like this. Maybe 500. Okay, there we go. And we can see if we play this back, we have also a very nice uh, reaction already. So another thing I want to do is for stacking up our, our effects, I'm going to change the mode to additive. And that's going to do, if I'm duplicating this, it's going to get brighter and it's going to really get a cool effect in the end. So um, right now I want to change the display options to analog lines. You can see now they are very, very smooth and we don't want that. So we can change the frequency bands to like 50. Also change the maximum height like this. Uh, maybe change it to the inside here side A. Um, by the way, if you see it on the outside, it's getting uh, choked off here. Um, and still your comp uh, your solid settings are uh, big enough. The only thing you can do is go to the audio reaction channel uh, solid here, click MM on the keyboard, so twice clicking on M, that will, re will reveal the uh, mask options here, and then you can just uh, increase the man mask expansion here. So right here you can uh, change that and then you can see all the details back again. So uh, I'll change that to a lower rate here and I'll just play around with the with the end frequency. If you hold control it will go slower so um, if you drag here it's going pretty fast with control it's going to uh, drag slower so you can get more detailed results. Okay there we go and then change the frequency bands as well. I'm holding control just so it's easier to drag. You can see my mouse is making a greater distance and changing it uh, very few, uh, well, not frequently. So there we go. And we have this effect. Now we can duplicate this and just change it up a little bit, but still keep the lines. And there we go. And just keep doing this a little bit so we get a few uh, different styles. And I'll, I'll show you a very cool result that you can create with this. So Okay, so the only thing I've done is uh, duplicating each solid and changing the settings a bit and changing the sides a bit. So now we have only lines playing here like this, but it's actually looking pretty messy. And if we go to main, I'm not going to do this in this com. The only reason why I'm not doing this is what I, well, I'll explain it later. Uh, so uh, we have our composition here and we want to go to effects and presets. If you don't see effects and preset, you can go to effect and select uh, effects and presets. You can apply force motion blur and click to the comp right over here. You can see very cool results already. It's giving this nice blur here. You can also change the shutter angle to 360. And the higher you go, the more effects you'll get here. You can also change the motion blur samples to 32 and you will get more samples in each uh, setting. So it's just a way of playing around with it and uh, just seeing different results. The only thing is that it slows down your system, so just only apply it in the end of your uh, on the end of your project. So another thing you can do is change the uh, thickness a little bit. So I'll change it to 0.5 for a few of these um, because I still think one is too uh, too uh, well too wide too thick. Okay, so I'll do it for a few here, and this is also going to add some variation. On another thing you can do is select a few and add some blur. And the blur will actually add for a little bit of depth. So if we have something blurry, you'll think it's it's farther away and it's going to give you a really cool effect as well. So um, you can just try and play around with all the different settings. 
and there we go. And if we go back to our main, we'll see the results applied with CC Force Motion Blur. I still think this is this one is too thick, so I'll just search for it right away. But first, I want to talk a little bit about RodiPolis.com. RodiPolis.com is a great website for visual effects artists, motion graphics artists, and filmmakers in general. They sell stock footage, 3D models, and a lot more, and really improves the production value of your work. I myself use it a lot, uh, all the products, for example, the lens effects packs are awesome, and if you use the coupon code TOLERATED, you'll get 10% off. So all the links will be in the description, be sure to check it out, and let's continue with our tutorial. Okay, so right over here, I have this as a result, and I'll just make this line here thinner. So I'll just look for it. Okay, this one isn't it. Uh, let's see which one we have here. Okay, there we go, and I'm going to make this uh, a little bit thinner. So maybe 0.3 is good. Okay, there we go. And it really adds a lot of vari variation. So I want to duplicate it again, change it to dots for now and change it to side A and B and just increase the maximum height and change the thickness to 5 so we can see it, maybe 3 and also add more frequency so we see a lot more of these little dots um, so maybe the maximum height we change it, yeah, okay it's, it's actually already good like this and then change the start frequencies to see different results here okay there we go and you can see if you lower this down, you will get wider, cooler uh, looking waves uh, that we can increase the height of like this, uh, maybe even like this. Very cool. Okay, awesome. I'm going to change this a little bit and then you can duplicate it again. And yeah, just play around with it again. So um, maybe now we'll increase the frequencies and change the height a bit. Uh, you can also do some crazy things like this. Um, it all depends on you, you know, um, I will increase it a lot and change the maximum height and lower the design like this. So I'll just play this back for a second so we can see our results already. Okay, very cool. Another thing I want to do is um, duplicate this here, uh, the first one I guess, and that's one with lines like this and I will change this to side A. And I'm going to change the height a bit and change the end frequencies a bit like this and make the frequencies bands really touch each other almost like this. Okay, maybe a little bit lower. See, this is also a very cool thing you can do. I didn't do this in the example, but if you lower your frequency um, end, you will see these thick lines like this. Also very cool. maybe it's a little bit too close to each other so I'll change this um, by a little bit there we go um, okay this one is very cool I'll change the maximum height a bit and you can see it's and if you duplicate it right now it's going to get brighter just because of the ad here so uh, now we have this as a result um, okay let me see um, what's going on here I'll toggle this off for a second, okay, it's just because it's getting slower. Uh, so as I said, just apply this in the end. So you can see these cool effects and they will be applied in the end, but right now we'll just uh, toggle this off so we can work very smoothly. You can duplicate it, uh, we can make it smaller like I've done a little bit in my uh, example and then just add a blur, like I said, it will create depth. So if we change this to 10, uh, 10 or 5, maybe 5, and change the opacity as well to 70. Duplicate it again, make it smaller, make it 15, and the opacity to 35, like this. And once again, scale. If you don't know the uh, short codes, uh, S is for scale, T is for opacity, and the blur is right here, so yeah. Okay, there we go, and we get some really cool, nice looking depth, so very cool effect. And we can also create one very close to the camera here. So you can just scale it up, and you can see it right here, and also change the opacity to 35 or so, uh, maybe 25. So it doesn't really take all the attention here. So very cool mirror effect, actually, and like we're going into the space. You can also do something like this. You can rotate them down, so here, 
if we press R on the keyboard uh, for all of these, we can rotate each of them uh, individually so we can get some different looking results as well. Okay, this is much cooler. And if we would do this in 3D, you can actually fly through it for the complete song, also a very cool effect, but that's not for this tutorial. So one thing I want to do uh, is also add some particles in the background, so I'll just apply particles, go to Effect, Simulation, CC Particle World, go to Producer and Physics, and also open the grid. The grid will uh, disable here, and the longevity point 5 maybe. In the physics, we'll toggle off our uh, gravity to zero and change it to the particle. We can change it to faded sphere. Also change them to white color, so like this here. And change them to a very small number like 0 0.07, 0 0.05. And we have small particles like this over here. And then we want to uh, lower the speed to 0.5 maybe. I'll just solo this for now just to see a preview uh, also so make my background black here you can do this right over here toggle transparency grid so okay this is very cool I'll just sh uh, drag it to the left so we can see that the particles already exist and right now okay we're getting this here very cool Okay, I'll also change the longevity to point, um, maybe two, and change the velocity to point two, maybe. Change this to three. Oh, birth rate. Huh? Okay, so I'll change this to one and change the longevity to three or four, maybe. Uh, so we'll, it just keeps existing to till the edges of our uh, of our comp here. Uh, maybe the birth rate we can change it to 0.5 so we don't get as many uh, in our composition here. So now we have some particles and the only thing we have left to do is animate our uh, logo. So we'll go to project, go to our logo of uh, Lovito Beats. So we'll go to uh, assets here. I have the logo. I will just import it and you can see it's not actually a square. The only thing I will do is get rid of the blacks. To do that I can go to mode click add okay so uh, I'll change this to uh, a little bit higher here and then it's something very fun actually um, so I will copy this audio here so uh, Levito I'll copy go to edit copy and go to main paste it in here uh, and just also put it on the bottom here so I'll just toggle the audio here off for all of them just for one here so we can get it in the result in our render so we have one uh, composition playing the actual audio. Uh, well, for now we can also toggle this off and just uh, enable the audio for the bear because it's actually going to take all the audios, uh, the thing that we're going to do right uh, right now, it's going to listen to all the audio settings uh, of our complete composition. So we only want to have this uh, one playing audio. So you'll understand in a second what I'm meaning actually. So I want to enhance the basses a bit. So we're going to take all the information of our song to actually scale our logo on the beat. So to do that, we want to just increase our bass a little bit so it's only going to uh, scale up on each uh, bass. Like, uh, well, you'll see the ID uh, in a second. It's a little bit harder to explain. So go to audio, add some bass and treble, and just disable the treble all, right, uh, all the way down and increase the bass like 50%. So now we have our audio file. We want to do right click, keyframe assistant, convert audio to keyframes and what's that going to do it's going to add our, uh, a null object here and if I press U on the keyboard I will see it's going to make each beat in a keyframe so I'll just delete left and right we don't need that we want to both we have uh, okay uh, we want to have both channels okay so um, I want to delete the effect now because we don't need it anymore once the keyframes are created we don't need it anymore it's just for that just to create these keyframes, we needed a lot of bass, so it's actually going to uh, pump up every bass boost. So uh, if we go to our graph editor, you can see it right here. If we click on slider here, we can see all the uh, frequencies here of our song. And what we want to do is clean this up a little bit. So uh, to do that, we can do it very easily. Alt click here on the slider, delete this effect actually uh, effect 
both channels. If we change this to value, it's going to be the exact same thing. If we are going to disable it, it's going to do nothing. Value is actually the same as what's been there. It's just a little bit shorter uh, for yeah to code with. Okay, so what we're gonna do is go in here, delete everything, go linear, open parentheses, value. So value is just what it's right now, comma 20, comma uh, 40. And I've done the research, so the 20 is actually my uh, lower frequency. So everything that's below 20, I uh, will change this to uh, zero. So right now we have 20 is our lowest, 40 is our highest right over here. We can see these, these peaks are always above 40. And I will change the 20s to zero and the 40s to 20. So uh, the reason why, I will explain it in a second when we get to see the results, but it's actually 20 is going to zero, 40 is going to be 20 and then close it down and we see uh, nothing changes in here. But if we enable the graph for the editor, so these graphs uh, here uh, is for the original effect. If we enable it for the graph editor, we can see what that has done. So right now, everything below 20, if we change this to 30, we'll ch see everything for 30 becomes zero. And right over here, all the bass boosts, every peak of bass, it's going to go up for 20. And what we want to do here, we have our logo here, it's scaled at 150. We'll change it to 150 for a second here. Um, so, okay, uh, so it's here 150, so we'll change it maybe to 30. Okay, there we go. And what we're going to do is, if we go back to our slider, we can see everything is going to 20. And we're going to actually um, calculate that every time it's a bass boost, a boost the scale is going to 150 instead of 130. And we can do this using our graph over here. So we want to just alt click on scale, click value plus, open parentheses and pick with the slider and close it down. Okay, so there we go. And we want to see if this is working. And I'll just solo this here. Okay, so I've done just one mistake. It's only uh, going in the width is right here, press X equals uh, the uh, the values over here, then press enter on the keyboard, go value e plus, open brackets. So just gotta see how it works on Windows. I've been used to working with uh, a Mac for a long time. Then X comma X and close the brackets and close down our uh, coding here. And now we can see it's going to be for the scale as well uh, for the X and Y. So, and that's the only thing we had to change to get that uh, very scale here. Very cool. So we have this result here of our logo scaling on the beat. Very cool. We can unsolo that and we can see all the layers together. And this is the result we have created. So very cool effect, just uh, mess around a little bit, uh, play around with the settings and I would love to see what you came up with. So uh, you can do a lot of cool things with it. One thing we can do to finish it off is go to new uh, adjustment layer and go to effect, stylize, glow, add a little glow and then duplicate the glow. So now we have a small glow and then change it to 250 and now we have something like this. Um, maybe even 150 like here. Okay, there we go. And now we have some glow. I will just decrease the uh, intensity over here. And then one more maybe that's very large here. Maybe 500 even. And see how that goes. So giving some details, getting some bloom on our, uh, on our effect. Very cool. Um, so uh, one last thing that we didn't do yet is to enable uh, the force motion blur for everything. So uh, right now we have multiple comps and I didn't do that in the original so I will delete it okay so I will delete the CC force motion blur and I will just add it to the um, to the adjustment layer over here so CC force motion blur get it to the adjustment layer changes to 32 30 uh, 360 it's going to slow down your system but uh, just do this for the render and you will get a lot cooler results and uh, the only thing we want to do is make sure that this doesn't affect our logo so well maybe we should create a new adjustment layer for our cc force motion blur so new adjustment layer here else it's going to get some really ugly effects so we'll paste it over here 
Okay, so an adjustment layer just above our comps. Um, I know I've just, uh, it's, it's getting a little tricky after a time, but it's a very easy effect as you can see uh, to just create these uh, analog lines. And if you can't follow for these, um, just try it again and I'm sure you'll get it after a, a few tries. So very cool effect. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and be sure to subscribe for more. So give it a like if you liked it and goodbye.